share how we incorporated BenQ from day one in our district. So that's what we're going to share. We'll show a little bit with the board too. So we did call it a giant leap for teacher kind because we have, just like I'm sure you all have at your schools, teachers who want nothing to do with technology and teachers who can't get enough of technology want to keep doing it. So we're going to share how we got even the most reluctant technology phobes to use our fabulous BenQ technology. I'm Kirsten Innes. I'm the information specialist, which means I teach technology in the librarian for our, at Prairie View School, which is our early childhood to fourth grade school. And I'm Becky Kayleitner. I'm an information specialist in our fifth and sixth grade building, which is Frederick School. We're from CCSD 46 in Grays Lake. We are uh, spread out over seven buildings, and there's only one or two of us in each building, so we've had to really learn how to collaborate and talk to each other through this process as well. And we are from Northern Illinois. Okay. Yep. So, why did we choose BenQ? When we were trying to find a solution for our interactive whiteboards that were failing, we had old interactive whiteboards, we had old projectors where you had to like turn off the lights and teach in the dark and everything. We had to come up with a solution. So our first thing that we looked at was some, was price point. How much money do we have and what can we get? And our next is we are a Google district, so we wanted to make sure that whatever we chose would tie in with our Google, uh, Google education programs. And that's what we found BenQ, and we really liked it, and they had a big emphasis on business, and it's now they're growing more and more in the education arena, so it's, it's fun because there's always something new, and they're connecting with new and different vendors and products to make it what we want. They really are listening to what the users want, the teachers want, and really developing it, so it's a pretty exciting time. So once we decided we were going with BenQ, it was time for us to go to flight school. So we had uh, one uh, pilot BenQ per school, and this was used based on the school interest and kind of who was interested in the building based on the building. So in some schools, we had one teacher took it and became the expert on it. In other buildings, it was getting pushed around daily or weekly. I can tell you it fits really nicely in an elevator. <laughs> uh, and again, like during this time, we were spread across all these schools, so our Google Chat was our lifeline. We all have it on our phones, and we're texting as we're running down the hallway trying to, trying to figure out how to use uh, the BenQ website, as we said, it was they were just getting into the education and really showing off what it could do, so the website was great. And then our current tech director started making BenQ in under two minutes, so it was just, or in under two videos. So these were just quick little videos that you could go in and he'd show you exactly how to connect and how to do this and how to do that. Do you have those available somewhere? Or just they're on our district webpage. I'm not sure if they're public. We'll check it out. That would be awesome. Yeah, we'll check it out. And then um, we had this whole great setup for how we were going to train and how we were going to do all this and summer work. And then our tech director quit. <laughs> he went to another district. So here we are trying to make this work. So we wanted to make sure everything was equitable. So every teaching and learning space across our district got a BenQ this year. So everyone got one. Some were ready to go on day one at the school year. Others were by like winter break. So every teaching and learning space has this. And like we said, we had talked about our PD and how we were gonna roll this out, what kind of training we were gonna do. We worked together as a team and we were using our pilot teachers to help come up with, all right, what, what's good? What do we need to share? What do we need to have going for day one? And then we developed our own training, what we were gonna do, what we needed for our teachers, how we we're gonna make this work on day one. When you walk in school, you have this board here and what are you going to do with it? So then we did find out that we had time on the very first day, that opening day institute, you know, when no one really wants to listen anyways, but we, we got them for 45 minutes. So how are we going to teach you how to use what you're going to use tomorrow in 45 minutes? So it was a little crazy, but we did it. We started with hard wiring. So all of the boards have an HDMI cable and you literally plug it in and go, which is what we are planning on doing today. So that's why we're doing this new thing with this Insta show. So it's kind of so, but hardwiring. So everyone knows how to use their laptops. And when you hardwire to the board, you can still work at your laptop and control it. So for those people who didn't want to touch the board, they weren't ready for it, they can control everything from their laptop. Then they started realizing, wait, I can touch this. I can do that. I can touch it. I can write on it. And so our staff reaction really started to get excited. They were really getting excited. For those who are technophobes, they were fine with the hardware. Yep. Uh, with the hardware, you can feel 
Yes. Yep. Yes. It, it works. So you can control from your laptop or your board and go back and forth. You're not stuck with one thing or another. So it's so easy. Even, yeah. Yeah. This one, is, and that's why we went ease of use and the price point. You can stay right here and do everything you do on your laptop, but be able to have the lights on. You know, we're so used to all of our old equipment having to stay in the dark. So that was just so exciting for so many people. And then when we found out they have floating, to, whoop, sorry. Okay, so it doesn't want to go. That's okay. So floating tools. So when we could use the floating tools and they could write on it. Oh, that's because it's already there. That's because they're, so you, all of your tools are right here. So you can write right on the board and you can use a pen. You can write on with pens. You can write front and back so you can change the colors so easily to have two different colors to do whatever you wanted on the board and multiple touch, multiple points of touch. So you can, this was huge for us. So we had multiple points of touch. You could also screenshot it. So let's say I worked through a work page, I could screenshot it, have it, and save it for the student that wasn't here for the day. And the, there's a remote that you can do everything from the remote. So you don't even have to stand up here to screenshot or do things like that. So once they were like, oh, wait, we could hardwire. Wait, I can write on it? They really, they started getting really exciting. So that led us into Easy Write, which is my down, hands down favorite feature, which is it's an interactive whiteboard and you can do so much with it. We'll pop it up later and you can see it up on some of the boards. But a lot of our schools, they lost their whiteboard to have their BenQ put up on the, on, the, on the wall. So we needed something that they could have up there. And this is really where I was able to catch those teachers that were struggling with some issues, showing them all the tricks in that. So I come, my building, we have several different languages coming in. We had several students walking around with interpreters. And easy, right? We could translate exactly, read directly from English into these other languages. So it, I could have a teacher up with six, the directions for the activity in six different languages and they were able to really give that student a little more independence from the translator, which is how I really caught some of my really reluctant teachers. That was where I got it, was it was that easy to create that individual connection with the student without having to go through an interpreter. And then from that we went into, oh. Uh, do you know uh, what engine that is used to translate the text? It's Google. Google? Okay. Yeah. So we know it's not perfect, right. but it's better. But it's than better, that. like we have, you know, we have Ukrainian and Russian students and, and several different Indian dialects coming in, and it does it all right on the board for us. So that moved us into InstaShare. Now, InstaShare was tricky for us because we don't have a great infrastructure. We hope they're working on it today, like right now. I like this hour. Um, but InstaShare is what we're doing right now, where it's connected here. I don't have a wire, so I'm not tripping over. I'm, I'm a klutz, so I can't trip over the wire. So InstaShare allowed us to do everything, but my computer could be across the room, I could be, have this up here, and that way you could have your in your workspace separate from the board, which I know some people like to do, or like me, where my workspace is separate from the board, and I was able to connect from across my library. And then we went to where my, my go-to is, which is logging into the board. So you can log into the board and access all sorts of great features and cool activities and apps, and not be connected to your computer at all. So I can log in, I can access, my Google Drive is connected, I can access anything from my Google Drive, I can go in, I can access anything. I can, I've got YouTube, I can hit up Chrome, so everything I would do on my computer, I can do on here too. And that's really nice, completely untethered, I don't even need my computer sitting next to me anymore. And so all of our teachers, by the end of the year, were falling somewhere on this. We had everybody using the board and everybody starting to work their way up the pyramid. And we had teachers who, like we talked about before, were so excited to do this. And teachers were like, oh, I'm never touching it. One of my closest friends was retiring this year. She says, I don't need a board. Don't give me a board. I won't use the board. She got hooked and she was using it too. So it's that easy. Like she's like, I'm not doing it. Everyone can do this at any level, which is pretty exciting. Can you minimize this? <laughs> So <laughs> then we moved into Mission Possible. So this is where we really got into it and we really wanted to learn more and do more. Because ourselves, we were just kind of sitting at that hard wire, kind of playing with easy write and login and not really knowing what was going on. So again, our Google Chat, we were in there daily. We'd be walking down the hallway with the phone going off. YouTube, we had, that was our go-to. We had a question, we'd go check YouTube. 
As we were learning more, we created what we call a one-stop shop, which are flyers and videos that are walking the staff through step by step, how to do everything, how everything works. And then um, we got Commander Chuck. Commander Chuck. <laughs> And we spent a half day with him and went, oh, no, 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 we need more. And they were developing a training program, so we talked with our interim tech director, and we were then able to <laughs> become BenQ certified trainers, which was great because we got to spend three days with Chuck and Kathy learning how to do everything. And when you don't know how to do something or you want to do something and you don't know, he's right there to answer your question. And like I said before, they're listening to us. So things that we wanted to do, he's like, you know, sharing with the big guys, like all the programmers, what they're doing. Like Chuck, the guy who works with the teachers, actually goes to Taipei, Taipei, right? Goes to Taipei and works with the developers. So they really are listening to what we want and making it happen. So that's what's exciting about this time, I think, being yeah. part of BenQ right now. So now we're going to infinity and beyond. Now we're really getting into the board and seeing what's available. So we have all of these great partnerships. There's Kahoot and Curapod and Anton and Seesaw, and of course it ties in beautifully with Google. They're develop oh, right. they're developing their own software. So we've got EasyWrite and the InstaShares, and then everything. Do you want to talk Everything's about Everything's in the shopping about? bag. My teacher, I love to shop. So my teachers know everything they ever want is in the shopping bag. So. You can be logged in the board, not logged in the board. We'll show you all that stuff. Like where all of these great, there's already activities created, shared on here for every single grade level. Interactive activities, interactive games. And like we said before, everything you do on your laptop, you can still do, or you can do it on your board. And so it's so, so easy and so user-friendly, like we were talking about, so user-friendly. So that's pretty much how we made it work in our school, in our district. If, there, if you guys have any questions, we'll be happy to play and share and show different examples. But we were asked to share with you how we how we made it work. So, and this is easy, right? This is easy, right? This is the whiteboard. So this is I don't have to be connected to my computer to use this. I can come up. I can do. I'm going to do my. That's that. Okay. So this is my favorite thing to do. So I can come up. I can write. Hello, and I, I have terrible handwriting. I can circle it, and it'll turn it into text for me. So I can go up and write all my stuff out quickly, and then I can do this. I can also type directly into it, and then I can also click this, and it will translate it for me. And I think it's over 100 languages. Which is so pretty that's cool. how I can do this. Yeah. So this was, I was able to throw up a note to my staff as they were walking through the building in the morning and it was up there and I knew it was going to stay on, I knew it wasn't going to shut off. Um, I know teachers who did their whole lesson, they would have it up and posted and then you can move around. This is an, in, in, I always say, <laughs> infinite canvas. So I could have all sorts of stuff, I can make as many slides as I want. Um, so this is really where I'm at as I'm learning how to play with this and make the most of this. And there are different pen tools. This one's a paintbrush. So you can actually use your finger and have it look like a paintbrush, or you can actually, as the art teacher, can demonstrate how to use the paintbrush where everyone can see it instead of trying to do it with a dot cam. So, so many different things that just sounds basic, but they're the most important things. We need to get those basics and how we're using it and how to make it make the most sense. Like we said, there's like multiple points of touch. Oh, we're on paintbrush. We're on paintbrush. <clears throat> So like, no. so cool. And you can change the color yeah, of your pen. Red, I've got. So you can change the color of your pens. You can so that each child could have a different color. They can use their finger. They can use the pens, and it's they love it. And it feels nice. It feels nice. And it's antimicrobial. So that's a benefit too. So. Uh huh. So very. So do we. Love. Are you doing all of your document cameras or wiring to a computer and then pass? You can so, also yep. dot cam straight to the board. 
So you, it's got all the ports here, so you can dock them right in. If you can. Okay. I, I've been doing that. Okay. But in my building, most of the teachers have everything hooked up to their laptop, to the USB adapter. Everything goes right in there. They have their dock cam that, and like you said, it takes up space, and then you got to be able to charge your Chromebook, and there's less ports in the Chromebook. But you can, and I don't think it works with all dock cams, but with most dock cams, you can just USB right into the board. Okay. And you can be signed in the board or not signed in the board, too. We have Chrome as well, Chromebook, so we utilize um, dock cams, and we have a port that we hook everything into to our bank report, so that's central. So that we do have a, a camera, but whenever I we've just been using the So that is just plugged in to where? So that camera's plugged into the port up on top of it. Like in the back. software. So this program, right now they're on the board, right? Yes. The, the, the yes. Program. There is a Mac version of it, a Windows version of it, a web-based version of it, so your teachers can be anywhere. And, and teachers, right? They don't have yeah. anything to do. They don't have a life. So, <laughs> yeah. the time, right? so they can be doing lesson planning at home. They can do it at the Starbucks. And, and it's free. Yeah. So like yeah. you, you know, with some of them you're limited to, oh, you can only put it on this laptop. So you can download it on anything and work on it save it, you can save it, you can sign into the board, you can save it there, or you can put it on a flash drive and dump it right on here, or connect to it. So it's kind of cool, you can go any, anywhere. It does have a little bit of wonkiness, because when you create here, that's what it always looks like. When you go from your laptop then to here, sometimes you have to adjust fonts and sizes and things like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly, same thing. So. Any other questions? Come up and play. Yeah, come up and play. <laughs> so, so I noticed like uh, like this board obviously is like mounted into the wall. Uh -huh. kind of. um, we the have ones on the stands. Yeah, you... we have parts. We have parts and stands in our, or we have carts and mounted in our building. Can you reorient them? Like, can you do it like horizontally instead of vertically? I think it would all depend on the cart. But that would be really tall. No, oh, I'm sorry. Like, um. Uh, orient them like flat instead of. Oh, um, to be flat. Oh, I was thinking, uh, uh, I think that would be just cart specifications because you can touch everywhere on the board. So, so yeah, so you made it like a table, interactive table, yeah. I would imagine, totally. Limitation of the cart, though, because that would have, be an interesting. I wonder if you could just put it on a table. I've seen, like, uh, there's been, like, some other ones I've seen where they, like, the, uh, they have really expensive mounts that you can like yes. shift between the two. Right. Um, I would want to use it as a table. I think that's fun. But that like would be really cool. Classroom setting is more practical to use as an actual board. So we did have interactive tables years ago from another company, and they were very cool. But it was all in one. Like this would be really cool to have a whole big long, <laughs> and to have the kids like work. I know it's your science. Like, could you imagine like having, you know, the scientific method and their labs. Well, even on the table, and like how easy to take the pictures and add that. And then you guys, you can pull up the, uh, the pen tool, and, like you can pull up the, uh, the toolbox, like whatever. Anywhere. No what you're doing. Anywhere. So if you were doing like, if a teacher's going over like a lesson or something, or like a PowerPoint, they could then draw and write notes on yeah. the yeah. screen. So if we're here, oh, it's already up. You're opening the box. So I can write anything anywhere. I want, oh, that's, oh, that's interesting. Well, that's new. Yeah, yeah that's interesting. So yeah, so anything, you can write on top of a YouTube video, you can write on top of anything, and what um, teachers will have like their daily math or the activity, and then you can save it, you take a picture of it, and then you've got this, and then so when you go back to erase it, you know, then it's gone, you know, but then if you save each one also, you know, it's a different period, different class, then you've got that work and you've got it and you can record so you can record for when the students aren't here or they need that refresher. So yeah, anything you can write on, anything. It's so cool.
Yep. And those are just like normal random feet brushes. Yeah. They're not like yes. an actual accessory or anything. No. no. I had a teacher doing it with her hair. Yeah, so no, this is, cool. like, so the pens the, the, are, right, the, the pens, pens are, are, but these are just, but these are just, they're just paintbrushes. Just paint really cool. Well, and you can do it even with, uh, here, we'll be going to Easy Right. You can do it even, I mean, it, it doesn't need a special anything. So if you, sw so switch to the paintbrush. Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's just so cool, like. The two first teachers that I were I was able to hook with all this was my PE teacher and my art teacher. Because you can also do different back oh wait. They move things on me again. Okay, there is some oh no. Is it here now? Yeah. Yeah. So you've got all of these backgrounds that are automatically in there and then you can upload your own custom ones. And we use thinking maps. So, so we have all of our thinking maps. Uh, and our Google Drive. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. And then there's um, there's timers and stopwatches and then all these fun tools for the math. Like teachers. scorecards. Yeah. And, yeah. and it's all right in there. So easy. So easy. And you can zoom in and out. Yeah. Well, this has been really cool. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.